uh, we will continue from last. Uh, we will continue from last class. Okay, previous lectures we discuss on uh, the uh, impedance parameter. Okay, uh, uh, next parameter will be admittance parameter. Okay, so compared to the uh, impedance parameter, uh, for the impedance parameter, we were evaluating voltage uh, equations. Similar to the uh, impedance parameter, admittance parameter are also evaluating uh, two sets of equation, but instead of the uh, voltage equation, we are now evaluating uh, current equations so that we will have uh, for two port system, we have uh, input current and output current. Okay, the concept is similar to the uh, impedance. The only difference is now we are interested to know the current. So we are representing the, the system uh, as a two port system whereby we have two equations of current <clears throat> and the equation of current is represented as the total of uh, admittance and the uh, voltage because we will have I1 is equals to uh, Y11 times uh, V1 plus Y12 times V2 and the second equation of the current which is the uh, output current I2 is uh, current at the output I1 is current at the input and this I2 is equals to Y21 times V1 plus Y22 times V2 and here you will see because we have uh, the, the emittance parameter will be Y11 the value of Y11 Y12 Y21 and Y22 so we will have we can represent the admittance parameter and the current and voltage uh, components in terms of the matrix uh, because a mathematical equation uh, when you have many variables it is easy easier to handle when you do a matrix representation so in terms of matrix we have here uh, emittance uh, uh, y is actually uh, current I equals to the emittance multiplied by the voltage. Okay, so the both uh, the network we have uh, similar similar network where you have in the input side is uh, we have current and voltage input. At the output side, we have current and output or voltage. And we use subscript uh, one as input, subscript two as the output. Nah. And you look at the direction of the current, current of uh, output also enter the network. Okay. And now uh, admittance is uh, always referred by the letter Y. So we have uh, uh, impedance we referred with the letter uh, Z or rep represented by letter Z but admittance is represented by the letter Y. Okay. And okay. Oh, I should put let slide show. Okay. Okay, if impedance parameters do not exist, then an alternative is needed for these cases. Okay, so admittance parameter is actually uh, alternative to the impedance parameter. Okay, this need can be met by expressing the terminal currents in terms of the uh, terminals, uh, current, meaning that you are relating uh, in the input terminal to the output terminal. Okay, so this one will be the equation of the 
admittance parameter. So you must be familiar uh, with the differences between the impedance and admittance. So in other words, because in admittance parameter, we consider current equations. So the concept or the format of the equation is very similar to the uh, impedance parameter. The only difference is that impedance parameter, you have voltage equations. But in admittance parameters, you have current equation. Okay. And okay. Uh, because uh, the admittance parameter are equations of current, so and it can be represented as a matrix uh, form. The mathematical representation is in matrix form. And you can solve matrix column by column. So to solve for the first column, uh, you need to, uh, you can make the second column equal values equals to zero. So to make the values equal zero, meaning that you want to make the current equation, a uh, current values. Uh, the second column is, uh, you are having the values of voltage equals to zero. Okay, so when that voltage is equal to zero, uh, you can solve for the first column of the impedance parameter because Y11 is equal to I1 divided by V1 during V2 equals to zero. So Y1, Y21 is equal to I2 divided by V1 when V2 is equal to zero. So V2 is actually the output voltage. How to make output voltage equals to zero? Short circuit at the output side. So to make the, uh, to solve for the uh, second column of the matrix uh, admittance, Y21 and Y22, you need to make uh, V1 equals to zero. So this is also short circuit, but now you want to do a short circuit at the input side. So in other words, Y parameters or the uh, admittance parameter is actually uh, short circuit uh, analysis or short circuit test. In, in lab, if you do uh, two port network lab, uh, to solve for the admittance and admittance uh, parameter, you need to short circuit at the output to obtain uh, the first column of the matrix uh, impedance, I'm sorry, uh, admittance. To solve for the second column, you need to short circuit at the input side of your circuit. Okay, and I think for, for simulation exercise also, you can do that. You can uh, measure uh, what are the value of voltage during uh, measure the voltage at input side when you short circuit it uh, and then you, uh, you check for the current flow then the y values are simply the ratio of the current to voltage okay current to uh, current divided by voltage gives you uh, admittance voltage divided by current gives you impedance so admittance is the opposite of impedance okay and here uh, short uh, y parameter is also referred as short circuit admittance parameters okay now uh, we look at each in uh, element of the matrix y the admittance parameter y11 uh, is actually short circuit in input admittance because we want, we relate input to output, Y11, and Y12 is short circuit transfer admittance from port 1 to port 2. And Y21 is short circuit transfer admittance from port 2 to port 1. Where Y22 is short circuit output admittance. Okay, because uh, Y22 to 2 is V2 over I2. 
The impedance and emittance parameters are collectively called the emittance parameters because impedance and emittance actually they complement each other. Okay. All right. Um, now let's look at the equivalent circuit. Okay, recall for impedance parameter, uh, we can represent the uh, the impedance parameter in terms of T network, right? Uh, for a network that is linear and has no dependent sources, the transfer emittance are equal. So a reciprocal network y12 is equals to y21 can be modeled with a pi equivalent circuit so for impedance and um, parameter it is best represented as t network whereas for admittance uh, parameter uh, the best it is best modeled as a pi equivalent uh, circuit otherwise the more general equivalent network Okay, it's used. And we can see here uh, the for the pi network, the, the middle section is actually a value of negative y12 and uh, the this part is actually y11 plus y12 and it's the output side we have y22 plus y12. Okay, in terms of its pi network here, you will have uh, y, uh, V1 in the input side. Voltage, you measure across Y11. Uh, voltage output, you measure across Y22. And uh, current source at the input side is actually Y12 multiplied by V2. And at the output side, you have Y21 multiplied by uh, V1. So these are actually uh, V1 uh, reflected voltage and uh, the impedance uh, values, the impedance uh, parameter. Okay. Okay, an example. Okay, example calculation. You are given uh, this network uh, having two ohms, four ohms, eight ohms. Obtain the Y parameters for the pi network with the circuit. Okay, first let us compare uh, the pi network, uh, the circuit itself, and the pi uh, model. Where here you will see 2 ohm is actually the value of negative y12. 4 ohm is actually the value of y11 plus y12. And 8 ohm is the value of y22 plus y12. Okay. So therefore, y12 is 2 ohms. Ah. But, okay, the unit for uh, admittance parameter is Siemens because it is the value of voltage over current. So, 2 is not the ex exact value of uh, Y12. Uh, Y12 is actually 1 over 2 because you have the ohmics value is 2 ohms so the admittance value should be 1 over 2 lah. so 1 over 2 is 0 0.5 and the value should be a negative value okay then Y11 and 
uh, y11 plus y12 should be equals to 1 over 4 lah, because you have the omic value at the uh, input side here, which is having a 4 ohms. So therefore, your uh, admittance values is 1 over 4. This one, 1 over 4 from the input side. Lah. And uh, because we already have y12 equals to negative 0 0.5 cements, therefore, you can solve for the unknown y11, where y11 is equals to uh, 1 over 4, which is 0 0.25 minus 0 0.5. Lah. And you will obtain this as uh, minus minus gives you plus. So 0 0.25 plus 0 0.5, which gives you 0 0.75 cements. For the uh, other arm of the pi, y22 plus y12 should be uh, equivalent to the omics uh, 8 ohms. And we will have the admittance at this section should be 1 over 8 which gives you uh, y22 equals to 1 over 8 is 0 0.125 minus the 1 over 2. And the value of uh, y12 is negative 0 0.5. Therefore, you will add together uh, 0 0.5 to 0 0.125. That gives you a value of 0 0.625. Uh, for the y22. So from this, you can summarize the, the overall uh, admittance parameter values, which is 0 0.75 for the y11, negative 0 0.5 for y, y12 and y21. For the y22, the value is 0 0.625. So each time you, you are doing a calculation, solving and circuits using two port network and ask for any parameter, whether it is uh, impedance parameter or admittance parameters, don't forget to make conclusion for your calculation. So if question asks for admittance value, at the end of your calculation, please write clearly y is equals to uh, each uh, in terms of matrix representation. Okay. <coughs> Another example. Another example, if you are given a T network, uh, obtain the Y parameter for the T networks. Okay. You can solve for the network using uh, the conventional method, whereby you need to do a short circuit test. Uh, to, in order to make the voltage uh, at the input and the voltage at the output equals to zero, uh, one at a time. Because uh, admittance ne network, admittance parameter uh, is also referred as uh, short circuit uh, analysis, short circuit admittance analysis. Okay, now we let V2 is equals to zero in order to solve for the uh, Y11 and Y21. So how to make it zero? You short circuit it. When you short circuit it, I put a, a, a box here. So this box representing one node. So when you have one node here, you will see the leg of this 6 ohm combined or we short to the leg of the 4 ohms. So that will make you having 6 ohm parallel to the 4 ohms. Okay, and now uh, you have the uh, current in the input side, the, the, uh, because in the circuit here, you don't have any current flow. So uh, a common way or the best way to solve for it, you assume the input side here is having a current source, a small value, because 
uh, if you short it, you, you don't know. And you need to have some value of the current. So an easy way to solve for such situations is by assuming a small current. So we let us assume that this section has one uh, amps current so that you can solve for V1. V1 is actually, uh, V1 is V across this current source uh, and V1 is equals to uh, the total of, now you want to use um, current uh, uh, divider uh, and here you will see uh, total uh, total resistor multiplied by the current that flow through this uh, loop. Okay, V1 is 2 ohms plus the resistance across this uh, 4 parallel with 6 ohms. 4 uh, parallel of 4 and 6 gives you 4 times 6 divided by 4 plus 6. So that will give you, um, here will, you will have 2.4 actually. If you multiply 4 times 6 is 24, 24 plus 10 is going to give you 2.4. Equivalent for the uh, parallel of 4 and 6. So therefore, V1 is actually uh, equals to 4.4 times I1. And Y11 is equals to I1 divided by V1. So you have assumed I1 is um, 1 amps. So therefore, uh, to solve for the Y11, you will have Y, uh, you will have it equals to 1 divided by 4.4 because uh, I1 is 1, so 1 divided by 4.4. Which is 0 0.2273 Siemens. So I2, okay, at that time, I2 is equal to uh, current divider, current that pass through the resistance across it, uh, because we have I1 is uh, split from from these two ohms split into four ohm resistor and six ohm. Okay, current divider is always uh, the other arm divided by with the total uh, total resistance of that section. So here you have a section of six and four, so you have total of six. So I2 is actually four times, uh, four times I the enter, I1, divided by four plus six. So you will have I2 is negative four divided by 10, and you will have I2 is negative 0 0.4, I1. Because uh, we have a negative sign here because we know I2 should be enter the, the uh, network. So therefore, you, inc you introduce a negative 4 in front. Okay. And then, uh, with the value of uh, I2 equals to negative 0 0.4 I1, you can solve for Y21 because Y21 is actually what I2 divided by V1. Uh, equals to negative 0 0.4 I1 because you have the equation of I2 is negative 0 0.4 times I1 divide by V1 where V1 is actually represented by 4.4 I1. So here you can, you can cancel I1 uh, that is present in the both numerator and denominator. So that will give you uh, Y21 is only 0 0.4 divided by 4.4, which gives you negative 0 0.0909 cement. 
Okay. Uh, to solve for the second column of the admittance parameter, we now do a short circuit on the input side. Okay. So again, short circuit, I introduce a box so that this side is actually short circuit. So you will see the leg of these two M2 ohm resistor will be connected to this 4 ohm. So you will see a parallel of 2 and 4 ohms. Okay. And at the output side, we have I2 across this uh, V2. And similar to the uh, previous uh, assumption, we need to assume I2, a small current, and normally we take one ampere as a, a value of I2. Okay, here I2 is, direction is entered through the 6 ohm resistor. Okay, now we have equation uh, V2. V2 is actually uh, current, uh, having a current flow in this uh, right loop. Okay, and here you have V2 is going to be total of 6 ohm plus parallel of 2 and 4 ohms multiplied by the current I2. And the uh, parallel of 2 and 4 ohms uh, is from 4 times 2 divided by 4 plus 2, which actually is actually 8 divided by 6. 8 divided by 6 is 2.5. Yeah? 8 divided by 6. No, 1.5. So the, therefore you will have 6 plus those values. 6 divided, no, 1.333. So therefore V2 is equal to 7.333 I2. Then you can solve for Y22 because Y22 is I2 over V2 during which uh, V1 is equal to 0, which is 1 over 7.33. And this gives you a value of 0 0.13636. I1, okay, I1 is actually current, divide. you can use current divided equations. I1 is equals to uh, negative 4 divided by 4 plus 2 times I2. Because I2 is towards the left, I1 is towards the right. So you have a negative sign here. And uh, a value of negative 4 over 4 plus 2 is negative 4 over 6. Uh, or negative 2 over 3 times I2. Then you can solve for uh, y12 equals to i1 over v2. And you have the equation of v2. You have the equation of i1. So you plug in the values. So you will see i2 will appear in both numerator and denominator of the equation y12. So therefore you only have 2 over, t, 2 over 3 divided by 7.33. That will give you negative 0 0.0909 Siemens. And note that the unit for admittance parameters are all in Siemens, whereas the unit for uh, impedance parameters, they are all in ohms. Excuse me, doctor. Your mic is muted. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, we move on. Uh, now we compare. Ah, uh, excuse me, doctor. Nak tanya. Ah, uh, hmm. kan y y punya bentuk kan? Boleh tu. Ah, uh, can we change to delta y delta transformation and then ah uh, so we got uh, the new R like 
So we the R is uh is in five position. So we just do the like uh, nineteen point three example. Can we do that? Boleh, Boleh juga. Boleh. Uh -huh. okay. It's up to you. Uh, Thank you. Some people some people don't like. I don't like delta delta transformation. Y transformation. I I prefer to straight away some other use uh, short circuit open circuit test. It's easier. I don't like the delta Y transformation, but if you're familiar, you are comfortable with that, go on. Because circuit theory, uh, there are many methods you can use. That you learn from last semester, and uh, many methods, Norton theory, not, not so many kinds. You can do mesh analysis. So whatever method that you are uh, strong, you are uh, confident, and you use that method. Right. Okay. For the um, comparison between impedance and admittance, so let's compare. Okay. Z parameters equivalent to T networks, where we have here uh, T network of Z parameters. Uh, the center here is Z12. Uh, and Z12 is equal to Z21. Okay, dalam dalam ni tak ada Z21 kan? Tapi actually Z12 is equal to Z21. And the input side here, you will see Z11 minus Z12. The, up, the output arm here will be Z22 minus Z12. And you can have here uh, in the input side, you will have Z12 times I2. Uh, that is uh, ref reflected. I2 is reflected current output in the input section. So this section is actually uh, reflected current from the output multiplied by the value of Z12. And at the output side here, you will have reflected input current I1 uh, multiplied by Z21. So kalau you belajar, uh, remember uh, uh, apa tu? transformer equation. When you have two coils connected together, you will have the other side is reflected from to, to the other side. So similar concepts lah, here. So here we will see so this T network in terms of uh, two port here. Yeah? Uh, both ways uh, you can represent for Y network for okay not what Y network Y parameter Y network to slightly different okay for Y parameter equivalent to pi network where uh, a pi can be represented as having negative Y12 here and uh, here is also y21 is almost the value of uh, y2 y12 equivalent to y21 in this arm uh, you have y11 plus y12 and the at the output arm you have y22 plus y12 okay so you will see here y12 will appear in both uh, arm Okay. And considering Y21 is actually the value of Y12. Okay, and looking at the uh, admittance parameter, here you have the Y parameter is parallel to the reflected uh, voltage, voltage source. So here you have voltage source, but here you have Y12 times V2 you will see reflected voltage from the output in the input side, which is multiplied by the Y12 lah, because this ratio is actually the emittance for this part. So, so when you're looking at this, you can see that the impedance is uh, linear, 
um, sorry, uh, series, whereas uh, admittance is parallel. Parallel representation of the uh, two port system. Okay. Uh, all right. So that is uh, admittance and uh, impedance parameter. They are always pair, lah, like uh, opposite or the, or the inverse. Admittance is the inverse of uh, uh, impedance. Okay, the third parameter is the hybrid parameter. Okay, sometimes the Z or the uh, impedance parameter and the admittance parameters do not exist. So you can represent the circuit or you can solve for the circuit by using another uh, parameters system uh, which you call as hybrid parameter. If we make uh, V1 and I2 the, the dependent variables, okay. In hybrid parameters, you combine representation uh, by having two sets of equations. Uh, now you combine the word hybrid means you combine, you combine uh, voltage and current representation, like. In the first two parameters, when we evaluate impedance parameter, we represent voltage equations. Now, and for admittance, you represent in terms of current equations. So for hybrid, you have two equations. You represent the system, the circuit, as a voltage equation for the input side and current equation for the output side. So in other words, you, you want to have a V1 equation and I2 equation. So that V1 is equals to uh, H times I, uh, I1 plus H times V2. So that uh, the first equation voltage is actually a component of current and its uh, hybrid parameter plus uh, the, it's hybrid times the uh, v, V2. So here you will have V1 is represented as I1 and V2. Whereas the second equation is current. We consider current at the output side, which is the I2, uh, equals to the hybrid element times I1 plus the hybrid times V2. So here you will see V1 is uh, I1 plus V2, whereas I2 is I1 plus V2. Because you remember, for each network, you must have uh, current and voltage. So current, there are two sets, I1, I2. Voltage, there are also two sets, uh, V1, V2. So for hybrid, we have V1, and uh, the elements that is not present in V1 is I2. 1 and V2. Lah. The elements that are not present for I2 is I1 and V2. So the multiplier for these uh, elements for the equation is called the hybrid. And we can we can uh, look at details what are the hybrids uh, actually representing. Okay, The H terms are known as the hybrid parameters or the simply H parameters. The name comes from the fact that they are hybrid combination of the ratios. And these parameters tend to be much easier to measure than the Z or the Y parameters. And they are particularly useful for characterizing the transistors. Because you have current to voltage and uh, sometimes the transformers can too be characterized by the H parameters. Okay, and uh, in this uh, hybrid parameter, we can do similar to the emittance and um, impedance parameter. You can do short circuit and open circuit. So now it's a combination. To solve for the first column, because V2, you, you have equation of V2 in the equa uh, equation, 
So you set V2 equals to zero. So that means you short circuit at the output side to obtain uh, the first column of the hybrid parameter. But to solve for the second column, we need to make current equals to zero. That means you need to open circuit at the input side. So uh, for hybrid parameters, you do a hybrid test, short circuit at the output, but open circuit at the input in order to evaluate for the value of the hybrid parameters. So the parameters H11, H12, H21 and H22 represent an impedance, reverse voltage gain, current gain and emittance respectively. So each element of the uh, hybrid parameter is not the same uh, for each element. It, it represents impedance, emittance, reverse voltage gain, and also current gain. Okay, For the emittance, all elements are actually impedance values. And for uh, for impedance parameter or impedance value, that's for, but for admittance parameters, each element are admittance values. Whereas for the hybrid, you depend on which position of the hybrid parameters. Okay, for the first element, H11 is, is actually the uh, the impedance V1 over I1 is actually the impedance value. V1 over V2 is the reverse gain of the voltage, whereas I2 over I1 is actually current gain, and H22, uh, which is represented as I2 over V2, this one is the admittance value. So for hybrid, you have different entry, uh, different, different uh, values that the hybrid represents. Okay, and the model for the hybrid parameter is also a combination of the admittance and impedance. So at the input side, you have the admittance, uh, uh, you have the impedance section where uh, V1 and at the output you have I2 and at the, uh, because we represent as V1 in terms of V2, and you will have reflected V2 here, multiplied by H12 and the current I1. I1 times H1 plus H2, H12 times V2. Whereas at the output side, uh, you want to know I2 equation, you will have a parallel uh, section where you have V2, here you have H22 a parallel with this current source H21 times I1, reflected I1 in the output section. Okay, the H parameters uh, corresponds to the short circuit. H11 is short circuit impedance. H12 is open circuit reverse voltage gain. Uh, open circuit means because uh, you do open circuit at the input side. Short circuit is because you do short circuit at the output side. And H21, short circuit forward current gain uh, because it's the ratio of I2 over uh, I1. And H22 is open circuit output admittance because you short circuit at the output side and you obtain H22 is actually uh, V2 divided by uh, I1. Okay. Ah, yeah. No, no. Uh, I1 divided by V2. So in a reciprocal network, H12 is always uh, negative of H21. So the equivalent network is shown in the figure. And an example of calculation, okay, you are given a T network. Find the H parameters for the two-port network. We consider a two-port system represented by this uh, T network. Okay, we do conventional method where to solve for the hybrid parameters, you do short circuit at the output, then you do open circuit at the input. So here again, we have to assume a small current at the input side. So when you short circuit at the output, 
I put a square bracket. So you will see three and six are parallel. So that you will have total current flow I1 pass through the two ohms and the, this section that is parallel. Uh, six parallel with three. So the, the, the equivalent parallel of three and six is three times six divided by three plus six. So three, plus, three times six, 18, 18 divided by nine. You have two ohms resistor. So total here will be four ohms only. Okay, so you can use a voltage divider. V1 is equals to I1 times uh, 2 plus 3 parallel 6, which is 2 plus 2. So 2 plus 2 is for I1. And the second one, you open circuit. So when you open circuit, uh, at this two, this two ohm resistor, actually no current flow through it because V1 is actually from this point across this six ohm resistor only. So I1, which is supposed to pass through the two ohm resistor, is zero. Okay, so when that section is zero, there is only I2 that pass through the 3 and 6 ohm resistor. Okay, H11 is equals to V1 divided by I1, where V1 is uh, 4 I1. 4 I1 divided by I1, the I1 will cancel off, which leaves only a value of 4. Okay, then, uh, I2, now we have to introduce negative I2 because we know uh, current is negative towards the, the network and negative I2 is equal to 6 over 6 plus 3 lah because you are using current divider always the, the resistor op that is not at the section and divided by the total resistance. Okay, I2 is 6 over 6 plus 3 times I1, which uh, gives you 2 over 3 of I1. Okay, so from there, the ratio of I2 to I1 is equals to negative 2 over 3. And that is actually H21 and V1 is equals to uh, 6 over 6 plus 3. Okay, from here, 6 divided by 6 plus 3 times V2, which gives you 6 over 9 or 2 over 3 V2. Then you can solve V1 over V2. You use this equation. Uh, <clears throat> V1 equals to 2 over 3 V2, therefore V1 over V2, you just bring V2 on the other side. So that gives you 2 over 3 value. So therefore, don't forget at the end, um, this uh, V1 over V2 is H12. At the, towards the end, summarize. And V2 is equals to 3 plus 6 times I2. And that is equals to uh, 9 I2. And the ratio of I2 to V2 is equals to 1 over 9. And that value is actually H22. And don't forget to summarize the values of all H that you obtain, H11, H12, H21, H22. And these are all, you will see, H11 is 4 ohms, H22 is 2 over 3, H21 is negative 2 over 3, and H22 is 1 over 9 Siemens. So for hybrid, make sure you have the right units. The first element is impedance value. The second is uh, 
the gain, uh, reverse voltage gain, the third, the, the first element of the second row is the current gain. Okay, and the last entry for the matrix H is uh, actually the admittance value, Siemens unit. Okay, then you can uh, uh, do your uh, own practice, do practice problem uh, 19.5 in order for you to explore more on the hybrid parameters. Okay, I move on to another uh, parameters, the G parameters. G parameter is actually partner for the hybrid parameters. Like uh, admittance is partner to the impedance. So G parameters, a small letter G, is uh, used in order to make it uh, to partner with the H parameter. A set of related parameters are the G parameters and they are also called the inverse hybrid parameters. They are used to describe the terminal currents and voltage as, as follows, where just now in the hybrid, you represent the system as v, equation V1, uh, first equation, and the second equation is I2. So for hybrid, you represent I1 and V2. So when you have I1, you, uh, so you decided to have I1 and V2. So the elements that are not in the in the title of the equation is V1 and I2. Lah. So therefore, you need to have um, a multiplier to the V1 and I2. So same as V2, you represent it in terms of V1 and I2. So therefore, you will get a set of two unknown equations with two unknown variables. So you will have I1 equals to G11 times V1 plus G12 multiplied by I2. And V2 is equals to G21 times V1 plus G22 I2. And you can have uh, similarly, instead of you do short circuit at the output, now you do short circuit at the input. And do a open circuit at the output. So which means you do the reverse of what you do or you do the opposite. So reverse is similar to opposite behavior. So for G parameters, it's also known as inverse hybrid parameters. So you do opposite. And the model for this G parameters is uh, opposite to it, where you have uh, at the input section is the uh, similar to like admittance behavior, whereas for the output side, you you will see uh, impedance behavior. Okay, and G11 equals to I11 I1 divided by V1 during open circuit at the uh, input side. G21 is equal to V2 over V1 uh, during the open circuit at the input side. Whereas G12 is equal to I1 over I2 uh, during short circuit at the... This is in output, this is input. V2 short circuit at the output. This. And G22 is equal to V2 over I1, and eh, sorry, V2 over I2 during uh, short circuit at the input side. Okay. Now, uh, each element of the G parameters, G11 is actually open circuit input admittance. Uh, G12 is reverse current gain. G21 is open circuit forward voltage gain and G22 is short circuit output impedance. Okay, and opposite to the hybrid, the first element is admittance because for hybrid, the first element should be impedance because G parameter is the inverse of hybrid. So the inverse of, admit, uh, of impedance is admittance. Huh? And the last entry, uh, G22, instead of uh, admittance in the 
uh, hybrid parameter. In the G parameter, the last element is impedance that opposite to the hybrid parameter. Okay, an example. An example of uh, find the G parameters as a function of S. Here you will have three elements, uh, three electric elements where you have uh, inductor, capacitor, and resistor. So don't afraid when you see inductor and capacitor. Uh, inductor is can be represented as complex number, so as the uh, capacitor. So in, to avoid the complex number, that's why you are asked to solve as a function of S. So one Henry uh, can be represented as SL and you consider as S value. And one farad, the capacitor, is one over SC and it is a value of one over S. So the resistor here is a pure resistor can be represented as its value uh, one ohms to lah. So constant. Okay. Uh, to get G11 and G21, we open circuit the output port. Uh, this one is to solve for the first column. So we do open circuit at the output port. So when you do an open circuit at the output port, there is no current flow through this capacitor. This capacitor is having one over S in terms of its ohm, ohmic value. And the inductor is having S value because it is having a one Henry. Okay, and Open circuit means zero I2. And I1 is equals to, I1 is equals to the voltage uh, divided with the total, uh, total resistance. And the total resistance is the resistance from the uh, inductor series with the resistor 1 ohms. So you will have total resistance, total impedance actually, uh, equals to S plus 1. So I1 is V1 mm. over S plus 1. And I1 over V1 will give you 1 over S plus 1. This I1 over V1 is actually the value of G11. So for V2, V2 is equals to uh, the voltage drop across this 1 ohm resistor. And V2 is equals to 1 divided by S plus, this is actually voltage divider, 1 over 1 plus S times V1 because V1 is at this point. So it is the ratio of 1 divided by 1 plus S multiplied by this V1. So that V2 over V1 is equals to 1 over S plus 1. And this is actually the value of G to 1. To obtain G12 and G22, we short circuit at the input side. Short circuit it means you, you let V1 equals to zero. And that makes the inductor has S parallel to the 1 ohm resistor. Okay, I1 is equals to uh, 
negative I2 times uh, whatever the enter the, the other ohms, the other uh, leg. 1 over 1 plus S times I2. Okay. And therefore, I1 over I2 is equal to negative 1 over S plus 1. And this is actually the value of G12. So for V2, V2 is equal to current that passed through the capacitor plus the current that passed through this uh, one ohm parallel to this uh, inductor. So you will have one over S plus S parallel by one. S parallel with one is S times one divided by S plus one. So you will have V2 divided by I2 is one over S plus S over S plus one. So if you solve for this, you will have uh, S2 plus S plus one divided by S multiplied by S plus one. And this is the value of G22. <coughs> now you have all entries for the G parameter. Don't forget to summarize it. So G, your G values is equals to 1 over S plus 1, negative 1 over S plus 1. Here you have positive 1 over S plus 1. And the last entry of the G parameter is S2, S squared plus S plus 1 divided by S times S plus 1. Okay, so you can practice problem 19.7 to explore more on the G parameters. So how many parameters have we evaluated? Four altogether then. So there are um, impedance parameter, admittance parameter, in, uh, hybrid parameter, the inverse hybrid parameter, the G parameter. There are two more sets, actually. Can we proceed with the other two sets? Or you are... Uh, apa? Tepu dah. Ada banyak sangat parameters. The next parameters... Let me see. Okay, let's compare before we move on to the next parameters. We compare the H versus the G parameters. Okay, H parameters, input side is admittance, output is admittance. Whereas G parameters, input is admittance, output is uh, impedance. Okay. The next parameter will be transmittance, transmission parameters, or the ABCD parameter. Okay, I think we just proceed lah. So that when you do, we I introduce you all, all the parameters, you can make comparison, you can do... Uh, oh, by the way, I haven't assigned the uh, questions for chapter 90. I will do so. And for the transmission parameter, since any combination of two variables may be used as independent variables, there are many possible sets of parameters that may exist. Another set relates the variables at the input and output is by using uh, V1 and I1. Uh, kalau yang first parameter impedance, you represent V1 and V2 equations. For admittance, you represent I1 and I2 equations. For the H parameter, you represent V1 and I2. The inverse hybrid, the G parameter, you represent I1, V2, opposite. So now, you want to represent V1 and I1. Okay, so in this uh, system of transmission parameters we have we can let 
V1 is equal to uh, A times V2 minus B times I2. And I1 is equal to C times V2 minus D times I2. So now we use letter A, B, C, D for the matrix transmission parameter. And take a note that when we combine, uh, you represent the system input parameters uh, V1 and I1, the input values, uh, you need to have a negative sign in the equations. So A2, A times V2 minus B I2. The second equation I1 is equal to C times V2 minus D I2. Okay. And take a note that in computing the transmission parameters, I2 has a minus sign because it is considered to be leaving the network. And this is done by convention when cascading networks. It is logical to consider I2 as coming out. And the transmission parameters, therefore, is uh, can be simplified so that you do a open circuit at the output side and short circuit at the output side. So for the transmission parameters, you do uh, two set of tests, open circuit and short circuit, both at the output side. Okay, because you want to con you want to evaluate for V1 and I1. So you need to do something at the output. Okay, and A2 is actually V1 over V2 during open circuit. And C is equals to I1 over V2 during open circuit at the output side. Both situation is at the output side. And B is equals to negative V1 over I2 and D is equal to negative I1 over I2. So from here you know that, uh, I1 over I2 is actually gain. It looks like gain but it's actually the reverse gain. V1 over V2 looks like gain but this is actually reverse voltage gain. And this one I1 over V2, this is the admittance. And V1 over I2 here is actually the impedance. So here you, we have for transmission parameters, we have different elements, different entry of the matrix transmission parameter has units, different units. Okay, the transmission parameter corresponds to the Open uh, A value is open circuit voltage ratio. B is negative short circuit transfer impedance. C is open circuit transfer admittance. And D is negative short circuit current ratio. Okay, and A and D are dimensionless because A and D are gains while B in ohms and C in Siemens. Okay. These are also known as the ABCD parameters. The transmission parameter is also known as ABCD parameters. Okay, an example. You are given uh, this uh, network. Find the transmission parameters for the two-port network where you have a T network of 10 ohms, 20 ohms, and then you have I2 uh, in the output side that you have a current source of 3i1. So you have dependent current at the output side. Okay, let's write the equation for the transmission parameters, the A, B, C, D values. A is equals to V1 over V2. C is what, uh, I1 over V2. Both are evaluated during open circuit at the output side, whereas B and D are obtained during short circuit at the output side. When B is equals to negative V1 over I2, D is equals to negative I1 over I2.
Okay. So to do a short circuit and open circuit at the output side. So we do open circuit here. So there is no current flow through here. So when there is no current, V2 is measured at this top of the 20 ohms leg. And V1 is equal to, because the output side is open, you only have one loop at the, up, at the input side, where V1 is equal to total of resistance 10 plus 20 times I1, which is actually 30 times I1. V2, V2 is equal to, um, A voltage drop or voltage divider voltage drop across these 20 ohms which which is given as 20 times i1 minus uh, 3i1 so when you do open circuit here the current source here 3i1 is still present you cannot do a voltage divider like i said just now you have to consider I3, I1 is available. So here you have V2 is equal to 20 I1 minus 3 I1, which is negative, which is equals to 17 I1, because 20 minus 3 is 17. And A is equals to V1 over V2. You simply divide expression of the V1, 30 I1 divided by 17 I1. So that gives you 30 over 17, which is 1.765. Then the value of C is equals to I1 over V2. I1 divided by 17 times I1. So you can cancel off I1 in the numerator and the denominator. That will give you a ratio of 1 over 17, which is 0 0.5. 0588 Siemens. Then you do uh, short circuit at the output in order to solve for the uh, B and D value. Okay, you do a short circuit. So this leg, uh, the voltage across. 20 ohms will be equivalent to 3I1. Okay, and total for this one, you will have two loops, the left loop and the right loops, where you have two sections, VA and V1. V1 is at this section. So VA minus V1, I'm sorry, VA... V1 minus VA divided by 10 is equal minus VA plus VA over 20 plus I2 plus I2 is equals to zero. So you consider at this node, I2 entering, I2 is actually 3I1 lah. And plus this current leaving, it's current entering. So at uh, the 10 ohm resistor, current is passing towards the right. At the 20 ohms, current going down. And here is current entering that node. Okay, but VA is actually 3I1. So you can plug in the value 3I1. And I1 is equal to... V1 minus VA divided by 10. So therefore, 10 I1 is equals to V1 minus 3 I1. And V1 is actually equals to 13 I1. From this uh, uh, equation, V1 minus 3 I1 divided by 10 minus 3 I1 
divided by 20 plus I2 equals to 0. That gives you I1 minus 3I1 over 20 plus I2 equals to 0. And this gives you 17 over 20 I1 equals to negative I2. So therefore, your D is equals to negative I1 over I2, which is 20 over 17 or 1.176 semen. And for the value of B, B is equals to negative V1 over I2, which is uh, V1 from 13, 13 uh, I1 here, divided by negative 17 over 20 I, so that you can cancel off I1 and I1 from the denominator and numerator. So that gives you 15.29 uh, ohms. And the overall results of your ABCD network, the total value is 1.765 and 15.29. And here you have 0.0588 as cements, and here you have 1.176. You will see this is almost the same. No, no, it's that they're different. 176, 1176. So for ABCD parameter, there's no, no element that is the same. <clears throat> Only for the impedance and emittance, the entry 21 and 12, they are the same. They are the same, but uh, negative values most of the time. But for ABCD network, none of them are the same. They are totally different. <coughs> All right, uh, the last one is the inverse transmission parameters. So altogether, there are six parameters. Huh? Impedance pair with emittance, hybrid pair with inverse hybrid or G parameters, H and G. Transmission parameter, ABCD, is pair with inverse transmission. Where in inverse transmission, instead of you evaluate for I1 uh, V1 uh, and I1. Now you want to evaluate for V2 and I2. So for inverse transmission parameter, we use small letter A, B, C, D. So we can also derive parameters based on the relationship of the input to the output. So the inverse transmission will be V2 represented by the equation V2 equals to A times V1 minus B I1 and I2 is equals to C V1 minus D I1. And so to make, uh, to solve for it, to solve for the first column, you set the second column zero, meaning that you do open circuit at the input side. Whereas to solve for the second column, you introduce zero here, which means you do a short circuit at the input side. Okay, the inverse uh, transmission parameter are small letter A. A is equal to V2 divided by I, V1 uh, during I1 equals to 0. C is equal to I2 over V1 during I1 equals to 0. And B is V2 over I1 during V1 equals to 0. D equals to negative. Don't forget about the negative sign for the B and D values. D is negative I2 over I1 during V1 equals to zero. Okay. So the inverse uh, hybrid, the inverse transmission parameter we refer as small t parameters. The uh, <coughs> transmittance uh, parameter we call as ABCD, but to reflect the inverse value we use T parameters. We use a letter T. Lah. The inverse transmission parameters called the T parameters corresponds to the open gain, open circuit voltage gain, negative uh, A as the open circuit gain, B negative short circuit transfer impedance, C open circuit transfer emittance, and D is op negative short circuit current gain. 
A and D are dimensionless because they are Gaines equations, while B and C are in ohms and in Siemens respectively. Because B and C, B represents uh, the uh, impedance value, C is uh, representing the admittance value. That's why B is having ohms, but C is having Siemens units. Okay, an example of the inverse transmission parameter. We have uh, a circuit here. Uh, you are given T or the transmission parameter. Find I1 and I2 if ABCD parameters of the two port is 5, 10, 0 0.4 and 1. You are given the, the parameter values. You need to solve for the circuit, solve for current I1 and I2. So let's do, we will have, let's write the general equation for the transmission parameter. It's always represented as V1 and I1. And because you, are, you already have the uh, transmission uh, parameters value 5, 10, 0 0.4 and 1. So you just plug in this value into the e general equation for the transmission parameter. So that V1 is actually 5 times V2 minus 10 I2 because you have 10 here. And when you write the uh, value, you put a positive number. But in the equation, you write a negative, a negative in front of the uh, B and D. But the value in the metric is positive. Okay. From here, from the circuit here, V2 is actually V across these 10 ohms. So therefore, V2 is actually negative 10 times I2. And V1, V1 is the voltage from this point to this point section, where it is actually a total of 14 plus voltage drop across these two, two ohms, where we have total of V1 is equals to 14 minus 2 I1. So therefore, from here, uh, from the first general transmission equation, we can have 14 minus 2 I1 and equals to negative 50 I2 minus 10 I2. Because this one, you evaluate 14 V1 equation with the transmission equation. The transmission equation is negative 50 times I2 minus 10 I2. Sorry, this one is V is patutnya. See, lah. 50 V2, but V2 is, V2 is 10 I2. So you can plug in the value here. You already get, you will get negative 50 I2. So this is correct. 14 equals to 2 I1, Minus 60 I2. So this is the third equation. And I1 is equals to negative 4 I2. Okay. I2 is equals to negative 5 I2, the fourth equation. So if you substitute 4 into 3, you can solve for it. 14 equals to negative 10 I2 minus 60 I2. Therefore, I2 is equals to 14, negative 14 divided by 70. And this is negative 0 0.2 ampere. And I1 is equals to negative 5. 
times negative 0 0.2. Because I1 is 5I2 from equation number 4 here. So therefore, I, I1 is actually 1. Okay, I will stop here because I think everybody is uh, stuck. The mindset, uh, even myself also, when there, you, when there are too many parameters, you tend to be confused. But the, the key words is that you try to represent in terms of its pair. So that you can recall two different situations at a time. Okay. Uh, next class, next week, I will use the same slide. So there are about uh, 13 slides. So next week, we are going to finish early. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I hope you all can proceed with the assignment and the mini project. Okay, I, I will receive a few more questions regarding the bonus part. So, student com, uh, comment that they cannot use the LM741 for the uh, active filter circuit. But when they use UA741, they can simulate the circuit. So, you can also use UA741. Actually, LM741 or PAM741 uh, eh, is a very... Uh, old circuit, uh, very old uh, active OPAM. So if you cannot simulate using LM741, you can simulate using UA741. Okay, and uh, the simulation, you don't have to submit simulation circuit. You only need to attach print out of the body plots, the circuit diagram that you construct on using the OCAT. I don't want to get hold of your simulation file. You just need to put in your report the circuit that you built, a uh, snapshot of it and put in your re report and the body plot where the body plot shows the magnitude plot and the phase plot of the uh, circuits that you build, only that. So for the bonus, you just, uh, you can put uh, body plots and comment on what type of filter is it. Because the bonus part, uh, you are not uh, expected to, to do the manual plotting whatsoever. You just briefly describe the uh, OPAM circuit is actually what type of circuit and to justify your uh, statement of the type of the circuit for the bonus part, you put a uh, body plots of it. So that confirms your uh, justification of what type of the circuit it is. Because you cannot simply say you, you, you think the bonus circuit is, is this type of circuit and so without any uh, uh, evidence that makes you draw the conclusion for that circuit. Okay. Um, I think the basic circuit, the passive filters, not much problem. I receive many questions only regarding the bonus part. Okay, for the for the magnitude and uh, phase plots, manual plot, you have to plot on the semi-log, show uh, how you plot, then you can take, uh, convert it into PDF or take a photo, put in your Word file, last you convert to PDF, can also. As long as you have, you, sh you need to show your, the process of how you do a manual plot. And the manual plot should be similar to the uh, simulation plot, which is done by the computer. Lah. So the reason that I ask students to do the manual plot to ensure students know how to, to do the plotting uh, of uh, body plots. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions? Uh, let me see. 
Mm. Not a thing. 